for Bleach Soul Society Breakdown, day 28, where Lawrence has just read chapters 271 to 280 of Bleach for the first time. Lawrence, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. Um, yeah. You know, another another summer day, now summer night. Um, yeah, excited to get tell into the uh, next end. <laughs> Exactly. That's that's what I was going for there. Uh, I feel really silly because a lot of times I have to double check what day of the countdown it is for. And I just today realized that we started on the first of the month, so I should be able to count consecutively at least for this yeah. month and just look at the dates to figure it out. But uh, yeah. still got two more days at least. To, yeah, to, where that will yeah, that will that fly. Trip. Yeah. Uh, so to recap where we last left off yesterday, Chad had a epic fight just one for the ages one of the best we've seen in the series with Noitra mm -hmm. and Rukia narrowly defeats Aronero, uh the number nine Espada while Renji gets into a fight with uh, the man on the cover here at volume 31 Sazia Laporo who is the number eight Espada and Ichigo encounters Ukiura again mm -hmm. yeah. we'll start things off with a poem for volume 31 a short but sweet so Don't Kill My Voluptures poem is Tell Me You Hate Me the Most in the World. Oh, damn. Dad, tell me. Tell me more, tell me more. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, this is, this is okay one. Yeah. I, I like when he goes short. Um, yeah. I feel like they're, it's a lot more evocative a lot of the time, and especially with the art and for it being Fazazio Pello, I think it goes really well. Like, yeah. Just look at the way he's pulling at his own, uh, his own garment there. Yeah, that's very trolly, very troll, very trolly poem. Uh, no, I, I think it's definitely uh, true from uh, Salcedo Poro's mindset. Yeah. Uh, if you were wondering, voluptuary is not a real word. Hmm. Yeah. The more, the more you know. Yeah. So we uh, we come back and. Ichigo believes he has won. He's beaten out Okiora, but then the dust clears and Okiora is just slightly dirtied. Mm -hmm. um, he says he's unimpressed because he believes that was Ichigo at his full power. And the fight uh, is, continues, but it's belief Ichigo le manages to land a sword strike on Okiora. And Ichigo says, well, I'm so excited because... If I can, uh, if I can reach you, that means that I can beat you. And if I can beat you, then it's over. I've beaten the strongest Spada. And Okuyo is like, oh, okay. And the big reveal is that he's only number four. Quattro. What did you think of this reveal? Yeah. Wait. So what number was the one that Chad got beat by? He got beat by number. Well, you don't know yet. But I thought you said it was number four last time earlier. Like, no, I you said you... you thought he was number four. Oh. Okay. Well, anyway, um, you, you, back. You, you had also predicted that Okiura was the top of Spada. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I wasn't too shocked that that, that there was the twist like coming down the pike there in terms of him not being number one. Uh, but yeah, that was like, yeah, that was like, I was like, oh shit, no, no, man, poor, poor Ichigo. You know, he thought, he thought, oh man, I'm facing their top dog now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna squash this guy and then you know the the rest is going to be a piece of cake if i can take this guy down but then you know it all it all comes crashing down you the uh you know when you assume yeah. you make an ass out of you and me and yeah. he he made an ass out of himself unfortunately yeah so it was about four or five months that i think after this chapter had uh been released that i'd started reading live so I think mm -hmm. I, I think I started reading live somewhere in like uh, the two eighties or the two nineties, um, but I, I I think I remember he, he still he, seeing people like reacting over this big reveal at the time that Ukiyor isn't even the top dog; he's just lowly number four. Yeah, um, I mean number four isn't like lowly; like it's not yeah, like I, yeah, it's like three. The, the, like, but, but, but you know, still that there's three people who are stronger than Okiora. When Okiora has been uh, positioned as like the big bad of the Espada. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely like curious to see like how like what characteristics these like big three have. Cause like, you know, they've been 
very silent in all these all of these meetings that we've seen this far. Yeah. For being so, uh, yeah. Like the fact that they're just laying like Grim Jow and Okiora like jaw off at each other, and then like Loopy and all these other like fools just like you know con- take control of all the meetings, and like Eisen is even like asking them for the opinion on anything. Like I don't know. Like it's very confusing as to like w- w- like what are what are you what are y'all up to? What are you what are y'all doing? Have been doing this whole time? Are you just like I'm so I'm strong, so I I can just like sit back. You know, read read my magazines, well, watch you my know, pop operas, uh, eat bonbons. For, you know, for there, that's more about like uh, just the author clearly highlighting who he wants highlighted. Okay, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, okay. You know, I but but still, you know, I'm, I'm like I'm yeah. kind of like what's this up? What's going on? Like uh, you know, but uh, yeah, definitely definitely excited to see uh, like uh, you know who who are these three, uh, you know, that are stronger than the great Okiora, you know. Uh, you. So you correctly guessed. You didn't get the placement right, but you correctly guessed one of them in the top three. Mean in the top three. Who in the top three? Out of the out of the three people that you guessed who were ranked number one through three, you did get mm-hmm. one of them right, at least in the fact that they were in the top three. Okay. You guessed someone was a certain spot, and you were wrong, but they are in the top three. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, Okiora lets Ichigo be filled with despair at this revelation, and then he just goes whoop and uh, puts a big old hole in his heart, yeah, in his chest. And Ichigo just falls on the ground, his eyes are completely blank, frozen because he's uh, he's pretty much dead. <sighs> and uh, what you know, what did you think of this? I mean, I was like, obviously he's not going to die. Like, obviously there's going to like, it's not, it's not like they're suddenly going to be like, oh, we have a new protagonist for the manga bleach for the rest of the series. You know, like obviously he was going to still live. So I wasn't like, I wasn't like, you know, down in the dumps too much. I was like, oh, he's probably going to be fine. But it was definitely like a, like a, you know, an interesting way to go out in terms of just like, you know, getting completely owned by. Okiora and uh, I really like yeah I, li- I really like this panel here of course like after after that you know after that reveal of yeah just him just getting completely uh, wasted and owned by uh, you know by Okiora so y- y- you know uh, definitely was excited to see how he was gonna get out of this latest jam you know how's how's Olichigo gonna climb out of the latest um, you know kerfuffle or you know I- pr- issue that he's been handed. Yeah, so we uh we move on here. And by the way, this is an example of what I really love about the series is the as it progresses is that the uh the the cover pages for the chapters start to get pretty out there with the artwork. Mm-hmm. Like I think this is a really great example of what uh Kubo does really well with the uses of uh you know the fact that this is for the most part a black and white uh art form. Yeah. And Definitely I think, make most, yeah. I re- yeah, I really don't feel like there's any other uh, mangaka who do what he does in terms of uh, stylization with just the, you know, limitations of the medium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's definitely pushing it for like, yeah, definitely like some of the art work I've seen yeah. uh, thus far in Bleach, like just in comparison to like Naruto and One Piece, like that, that, that he's definitely like, you know, going like a different like way with it i mean i like i really liked like um the mm. color spreads from oda on in one piece i think he really nails those like that, that's where i kind of feel like he's like a innovator in terms of like pushing stuff forward like i think he like compared to like naruto i haven't seen, i haven't really seen any bleach like color spreads or anything to really compare the, those uh compare the mm. two but yeah but yeah in terms of like working with the in the black and white just like pure like chapter cover pages in like the you know in between moments like yeah this is definitely the best i've seen from a shonen that i've read yeah the big joke and also the thing that kubo gets a lot of shit from from uh fans and detractors alike is that he doesn't use backgrounds most of the time yeah yeah uh he just leaves them blank and uh you know i I like it yeah i haven't really cared in mind the you know the the lack of backgrounds so uh we then move on to or he may being attacked and saved by grim Chow. sorry mm-hmm. sorry no, i nope that is not a correct statement okiora sorry or he may is attacked 
and then she is saved by Grim Zhao from the attack. Yeah. What do you think of this? So she was attacked by some Aran cards. Were they like Espadas or what were they? I'm trying to come. come they from. no, they're Aran card. They are I, technically, I think they're Aizen's um, subordinates, but I think they're also Okiora's. It's I don't know. I don't know, like, because I was like trying to figure out. So, do they know about her healing powers, or do they just like yes. know that she's they, okay? So, they, they, I think they basically they have crushes on Aizen is what it is, and that they're mad that or he may stealing the attention. Oh, like so they think, oh, she's the new ingenue that that Aizen's like brought on, and they, they're like, uh, oh, the, what, what about me, Mister Aizen? Um, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. They definitely have a uh, reverence for Aizen. Yeah, yeah. So, um. But yeah, uh, you know, you know, of course they're they're gonna be jealous. I mean, or he may, you know, they're they they they, you know, they have rights. They have a right to be jealous, I guess. But not not really. I mean, there it was kind of a dick move what they were what they were pulling there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I liked I liked how Grim Zhao came and, you know, like this is what I was talking about. Like I like to see some Iran cards like showing their own like sense of code in terms of like, you know, Grim Zhao. He's like uh, about like paying back his debts, you know, like or he may revive them. I'm going to I'm going to save you for doing that, and then, you know, we're 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 balanced now. So I'm going to like make you do me another favor. So I kind of like that. Like he's showing, you know, like this is why I've kind of been waiting for. Like some around cars, like kind of showing their own like, like gumption, uh, gumption, like their their own like their own wills, their own desires, and like following them rather than just being like fully beholden to Eisen. Like he kind of showed that a little bit when he was like did the whole thing where he just like went to the to earth to fight Ichigo and all, all of that. But, um, you know, this is like the first time where I've seen it, where he's like, not just willing to do it out of like a pure destruction cause. Like he, um, like he, he say like, he actually like goes out of his way to like save a person. Of course it's like to pay a debt, but you know, the fact that he has it in, to, in him to like actually you know, <laughs> try to do that, you know, I mean, it, it's it's more. I honestly, I think the fact that he was saving her was either inconsequential. I think he just wanted to, you know, kidnap her for her to heal Ichigo, and she just happened to need saving at the moment. Right. Okay. But even like the fact that he like not just beyond like saving Orihime, but then like the fact that he wants to fight Ichigo on equal footing. Like he could easily mm -hmm. have just been like a dickhead and kind of been like, I'm, uh, I'm, I could, I, you're still technically like somewhat alive. I could just have her revive you to a point where you're like comatose and then and, and then get the job done and be like oh i defeated ichigo but the, you know the fact that he has like you know something internal in him like a code that's like i want to fight this guy at my at full strength and like be able to like you know feel great about this victory like to actually have like feelings about the victory you know mm -hmm. i is is it's at least interesting enough that to see like the iran cards like having like these like kind of feelings and these like motivations you know Grim Jow is similar to Zoraki in that they live for the fight and proving that they are the strongest and uh, they don't want to settle for defeating someone in a weak format. Right. Like he's kind of like reminds me of like, like you said, like a kind of like of Zoraki, like obviously like mm -hmm. Kampachi, like a little bit, like he's like almost like the Ronkar, you know, counterpart in terms of like, uh, this is a very like uh, Kampachi, like move, Zoraki move in terms of. You know, like like he pretty much did the exact same thing, but in like a, a in a calmer fashion in terms of like getting Orihime and take and getting her to take him to Ichigo and kind of like joining his side temporarily just for like a means to an end. Of course, in this in that case, they ended up becoming like full full blown allies, and then you know kind of had be, grew this more like friendly rivalry. And in this case, it's like going to be a fight to the death. Like mm -hmm. assuming, uh, assumingly so. So, um, yeah, there's differences there, but it's definitely a very similar kind of relationship. So, uh, we move on then to Uryu joining Renji in the fight against Saziel Poro. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Uryu showing up to uh, join the fray? Yeah, it was about time. You know, Renji needed some help. I mean, he's a great fighter, but upstairs, you know, he, like I don't think he's dumb or anything, but he's just like not the strategist. He's not like a he needed someone in that uh I think and I think Uryu was like the perfect 
kind of pair for him because he has like uh you know different powers so they're not like kind of overlapping in terms of like Renji has his whole bankai and strength thing and Uryu has his more distance fighting and his use of the arrows and um and his uh strategic base so i think they would like, complement each other really well in a in a battle sense and the you know the fact that they were able to push in a spot a together to the brink uh real, like the only thing keeping them from getting the w is the fact that he had full knowledge of all of their capabilities before they fought i mean obviously he didn't know like the full extent in terms of like he didn't know Renji had that whole like fire uh mm -hmm. ability that he was going to pull out of the, pull out of his ass and then or he didn't know or you had like enhance his uh his his uh quincy abilities to the point where he'd be able to like give him a run for his money so um definitely want to see like what they come up with during this like little uh yeah. reprieve they've been given uh you know it, it, within this fight joining forces and working together there he managed to uh push sazio poro and actually uh injure him but sazio poro survives and mm -hmm. is just sort of pissed that he was pushed that far to yeah. and then he begins to eat his own subordinates <laughs> what do you what did you think of that when he uh, starts eating the the hollows once again, a uh, very much a mirror of kind of like of the of the Soul Reapers in terms of he's like the twelfth division captain, you know. In terms of he doesn't really care about his, his subordinates as much. He's all about you know pushing his science to the limit and uh, you know and grasping all the knowledge that he possibly can in the world. Like that's like he's mostly excited about this fight because he's like he gets to see someone that pr can perform a bankai, which he hasn't seen before. He gets to see a Quincy up close and personal. And he's like, I think he's like almost like fast forwarding past the fight in his mind, thinking of, oh, I'm going to have these interesting like research subjects to to kind of poke and prod at. So uh, once again, uh, uh, it seems like, you know, kind of like a very like they're almost like a mirror to each other. The the soul society of the around cars thus yeah. far with the kind of the spot of reveals. Well, Sazio Poro says, uh, you know what? I need to go get changed. I don't want to be fighting while I'm this dirty. And says to her, you and Renshi, you should think you should use this time to take a break, think of a way to beat me, and that's the last we see of them here. Yeah. Grim Jow brings or he makes Ichigo to have him healed. He comes back to life, and uh, as she he's in the process of being healed by Orhime, we get uh, this wonderful page. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. What? So, what did you think of this fight that uh, erupts here? Um, that uh, Okiora and Grim Jow are at heads with one another. Right. You at know, ends, at, uh, at odds. At odds. Yeah. At odds. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's like. Nope. I gotta kill something. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> you know the 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 bugs, man. What can you do? They uh, you know, bugs. <laughs> we'll see if this went well. All right, I'm back. I'm glad I killed that bug, whatever it was, because it was a climber, and I did not uh, want that climbing on me in my sleep. All so, right, yes, what did enough. you think of uh, <laughs> and Okiora being at all? all right. Well, to briefly continue, like, the analogies I'm making, like, Okiora, it, I feel like his Soul Reaper kind of counterpart is, like, Byakuya in terms of, like, they're both very much about, like, following, like, things to the to the exact letter of the law, and... Yeah, so of course, like he he would be the person to kind of well, obviously number one, he already dealt with Ichigo, and he was like this that th that was my guy to deal with. I claimed him from the the get go, and you and Grimjaw, you only came in like secondhand and and and, and took Ichigo as your own prey. And it, it, I think they kind of have like that little it, like inner battle going on beforehand. I mean, that was kind of like the the kickoff of their initial arguments. So it would make sense that he would be the one to you know to you know come come and encounter him here uh i i like i don't know why grimdaw was so surprised though like i mean like <laughs> you're like like clearly like they these 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 uh Arankars have amazing sense of like of of uh of uh 
like souls and like and uh how energy works and, and all that and he kidnapped orihime who was uh okiora's responsibility to guard like it's pretty obvious that that um okiora was going to like find them pretty soon like he's not in an i'd understand if he were like an inept like motherfucker or whatever that just like kind of like had his thumb up his ass like all the time but he seems like a pretty responsible and dutiful guy so i think the, he's probably like obviously he did have contingency plans like ready to go because he was able to you know put that work in but mm. yeah this panel i was like why are you so shocked, bro? I guess maybe well, just the, it's more the, of a great um oh shit, the killer's right behind me moment. Yeah. I do like the I do like the drawing of it though. Like it's yeah. definitely great, like uh yeah. Uh Here's yeah, I mean this is this is a great stylization here. The the use of shadow mm -hmm. um from Grim Zhao on and only we're only getting half his face, we're getting part of it in shadow. The shadow he's his head itself is casting on his neck with uh the way that Ukiyo is uh blurring into appearance behind him. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you have to remember the other thing here is uh, Ukiyo is a full two ranks above uh, Grim Zhao in terms of strength. Right. So, uh, you know, it makes sense why he would be like, oh, shit, this is about to happen. Yeah. Right, uh, yeah. They fight for a little bit, and Grim Zhao uses a little trick to seal away Ukiyo for the time being so that he and Ichigo can fight. And Ichigo and Grim Zhao begin their fight with one another. What do you think of what you've seen so far? Ichigo versus Grimjo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the, so they, they started their, their fight. Uh, you know, obviously, Orihime and, and the homie Nell uh, were, were sitting courtside. Uh, you know, like, the, the, you know, more. Well, Nell was obviously mourning Ichigo and, and regular Orihime. Spike Lees. Huh? Regular Spike Lees. Yeah, regular Spike Lees. <laughs> yeah. They were obviously uh, more. Like, Nell was obviously mourning the potential death of uh, Ichigo, but Orihime was very confident, you know, saying if Ichigo says he's going to do it, gonna win he's gonna win so uh they were watching on and then um yeah uh you know grim Zhao and ichigo they like initially when orihime was healing uh ichigo she kind of refused because she was like i if this is gonna lead to like you you all fighting ichigo potentially dying i feel like it's a waste of time but ichigo is very much like i feel like i have to see this through you know i i think um you know, kind of all all goes back to like the the what like the the, the Sankai and Rukia kind of had in terms of like, uh, you know, there's fights for honor and then there's fights like the protector and whatever. And this mm -hmm. is definitely like more of a fight for honor. And uh, um, I feel like yeah, Ichigo feels feels like it's like it, it is re his responsibility to kind of deal with this guy, and uh, you know, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I I do I do like the the beginnings of it. Uh, Obviously, it seemed like if correct me if I'm wrong, but if he, I feel like Grimjaw was like aiming at Orihime and no with that like with that shot to try to like pr prod Ichigo into going into his Soul Reaper mode. Or, I mean, into his um his Hollow, hollow mode. Maybe uh, not really sure. Um, I mean, that's what it seemed Grimjow, like. Yeah, Grimjaw pulls out the uh, the special. Sarah that only the Espados can have access to um, mm -hmm. the Grand Ray Sarah, mm -hmm. and uh, Ichigo has to go into the Holified form to break it and protect Orihime and Nell, and that's mm -hmm. where we uh, we end the chapters. Yeah. Do you have any uh, expectations for tomorrow? Obviously, I feel like we're going to get more of that fight. Um, I feel like. We're probably gonna get some more like Rinji and Uryu, uh stuff going on, seeing what seeing what they're up to, check ins. Uh, you know, maybe maybe Aizen and Tosin and Jin reacting to the developments as they happen. Probably that's it. I think that's all. I think it's probably everything. Okay. Well, tomorrow you are going to. Be finishing volume 32, Howling, mm -hmm. and entering volume 33, The Bad Joke. Gotcha. It's, uh, it's another fun, action-packed 10 chapters tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're gonna be having a lot. It, it, well, yeah, we, we, like I said, we're moving at a much faster pace, and a lot is going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. So I... I, I... Two two quick questions about mm -hmm. well maybe one big one but like two kind of separate ones. So 
in terms of like the difference between like hollows, humans, uh, Ronkars, hollows, humans, and soul reapers, like one, are soul reapers human or are they their own no. race? Soul, soul, uh, soul reapers are not humans. What are they? They're something. They're, they're basically spirit entities. They're spirit entities. So, and that's why their aging is like so like different, right? They, they, they age, right? Like they, do they age? Yes, they age. But it's just like very slow relative to the human, right? I think technically Rukia is supposed to be like in her 400s or something. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Arankars are hollows. Yes. So they were once human, technically speaking. Some of them. Some of okay, so. I, I, th I think there's also the implication that there may just be natural hollows that just gotcha. exist. Gotcha. Like, are will they reveal if any of the espadas were once human and they remember like their human memories or something like that? Um, No, I don't think that happens. I don't think so. And like, do hollow do Arankar's age? Are they like? Oh, uh, you know, actually, hold on, mate. Just give me a sec. Let me look up something yeah. on the wiki. Um, it, it it is possible that one of them might. Uh, let me look up. Oh, hold on, history. Okay, no, I, yeah, we, we never see anything about their time as humans. We only see their time as hollows before they were spotted. Gotcha. So, okay, l last question. So how does Ichigo's dad, like, how is Ichigo's dad, like, li like have one, like, birth Ichigo if he's not a human? Like, he, if he's, like, a spirit energy person, like, how does that whole thing work? Does, like, like... I don't know, like I, I don't know that that that's just like I did. That was just like going through my head, like with the whole like Ichigo's dad being a spirit, being a soul reaper. Like, so does that mean he's just going to be like the same age like the whole time as Ichigo's? Like, well, he, you know, if you remember when um, when we first find out that he's a Shin he has Shinigami powers, the conversation is that his powers came back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but so that means it's possible for. It's a for a for a person born in that in the soul society world in that world to become a human by losing their powers and then so then once they lose their powers then they become a human. It's not really well defined in the series. You'll okay. I mean you you'll find out uh, Ishin's backstory later in the series. And gotcha. Yeah, but like say like if Rukia stayed in her gig eye and was just on earth would she have aged like normal or would she have like still lived as long as her? i don't think she would technically age at all because it's she's living in an artificial body in the first place so unless the the gig eye was designed to age okay. she wouldn't gotcha okay yeah that's like well yeah okay all right yeah you know just this, this was trying to like make sure i get my bearings on the whole the whole like how this all works is yeah yeah. Okay, but that makes sense. All right. Anything else? <laughs> oh, no, that's all. All right. Well, have a good one, everybody. We will see you tomorrow. All right. Have a good one.